Hey guys, here we are again, back on the Woodhead line, part three. So we'll start where we finished last time at Hadfield, past Dinting, go past Godley Junction, and finally make our way into Guy Bridge. So sit back and enjoy. Here we are, we just travelled down the line to the first station, first station after Hadfield that is. This is Dinting. It says Dinting Station but it's a junction because there's also another line that goes to Glossop, small branch line. In fact this is a triangle but all the buildings are still intact here. I was really amazed at the infrastructure. As you can see there's two lines, well there was originally two lines and the station is still intact. Just let this baby go through. This is the approach to Dinting Station. As you can see, still original buildings, everything intact. Well done, guys. So, like I say, this is the abandoned side. Originally, this was the woodhead, like you say. It was double lined, but it became single line once it became passengers in the 80s. So we've got another train coming through now. This is coming off the uh, over the Dinting Viaduct, the famous Dinting Viaduct. You look at these infrastructures, they look absolutely fantastic. Great Central, bring it on. This has been well preserved even though it's officially just a halt now, an unstaffed halt. So this is the line that goes to Glossop and this is the disuse part of it. Just speaking to the guard on that last train, apparently this platform isn't used anymore. Apparently the gaps are too wide. So the trains to Glossop now have to go via Hadfield. So that other curve is used all the time. This one, as you can see, is not in the best of conditions. It isn't used much. Other than I expect for empty stock come the end of the day. Like I say that train's on its way to Hadfield. If you notice just ahead, there's the other part of the triangle, the triangle that goes to Glossop, that doesn't have a station connection. And this is where the triangle meets up at the other end. So this is the abandoned part of Dinting Station, the one that came out of Glossop and headed towards Manchester. As you can see this has been abandoned for a very long time. There were plans at one stage of doing this up, all part of the uh, a railway society, but it never came to fruition. As you say, they'd singled the line to gloss up a long time ago, and so these services, well, these buildings were not needed. But as you can see, it's as if they've been frozen in time. Look at it, all the stuff here is still intact. 
Wow. Ooh, maybe a bit of work needs doing on that roof, mind you. But, yep, yeah, still nice to see the structure there, not destroyed. Look at it. And so we make our way to what was originally the Dinting Railway Centre. Just outside of Dinting Station going towards Glossop, this is an old crossing. And here, look at the old barriers there, they're still intactish. But uh, yeah, same again on this side. Look, there's a lovely footbridge that overlooks the site of the old Dinting Yard, so uh, let's see if we can get some shots from up there. So here's a lovely shot on the Glossop Spur of where the trains used to go to Dinting Yard which at a later stage became the Dinting Railway Centre. I think that was bought in 1968 by the Bahama Mob who had just bought a loco from Barry and wanted to do it up. It's a very successful organisation that lasted till 1990. Unfortunately they were kicked out and the place is looking pretty derelict. Which I think we'll go and investigate. But you can see where the fence is at the back there. That's where the train used to go. That's where the siding was. And if I remember rightly, this was also served by the electrics prior to preservation. I'm sure I've got a photo where there's a, you know, the overhead uh, canopies are still uh, standing. Right. So let's see. So like I say, um, on the left, they had a running line for the preservation mob that went all the way up to the station. And in the middle, they had a, the original GCR engine shed, which was not good enough. They had to build another shed. Apparently, they needed three roads because they were getting loads of preserved stuff, but they weren't able to put it under cover. So they built another shed that led all the way up to the station itself. And I remember coming here in the 80s and I'm sure there was a, a monorail. Uh, you know, like a model trail where you can sit on. Let's go and investigate and see what clues are left. And so we have the entrance to the great Dinting Railway Centre. Well, it would have been 30 years ago if you'd uh, come whilst it was open. Doesn't look in the best of conditions at the moment. Yeah, it's hard to imagine, but there used to be a model railway here. Uh, where you could sit on the trains and go around a little monorail and I can't find any clues to it at all hopefully this is signs that the uh, railway centre is slightly up ahead yep certainly railways here look at all this ballast if I remember right there was a running line on the left that went all the way up to the station and on the right there should be the two engine sheds the original one and the one that was built by the guys to accommodate more of the preserved locomotives. Let's go and investigate. Finally we're getting there. I can just see in between the trees one or two buildings. Let's get some close-ups and find out what's ahead mate. I'm not sure what this is. Could it be in a signal box? Or just a loading ramp, but it's a bit tall for that. But look at this gem that's just beyond it. At last, we found the engine house. There she is. I would have said untouched, but uh, looking a bit worse for wear. There's that loading bay again. And this is where we'll be going next. Very painful to film, but... At least it's not been destroyed, so hopefully it can be reinstated as something else. Like you say, sleepers, people burning bits and bobs. Compared to when I came here in the 70s and 80s, this is absolutely disgusting. But at least it's still standing. Unlike many structures I've studied, which have actually been destroyed. I first went up to Dinty when I was just 13 
Wow. There she is, from the other end. The top end, the nearest to the Dinton station. Oh. Wow. I expected some form of preservation order on this, otherwise I'm sure this would have come down years ago. So remember I told you about that uh, bigger shed that they built to accommodate the steamers, make it into a semi-museum. I found it. Yes, I did have knocked it down, but I didn't realise there were still some bits left. Look at this. One, two. Yes, I was right. Three roads. Oh, yes. Like I say, the original shed, the GCR one, was just for one and a half locos. So they needed to build a bigger one. And this is where it was built. Just shows you how close we are to the station. But wow. Let's see if I can find any more traces of this baby. Yeah, there she is. Oh. Well, I don't think you'd find this in the summer. I'm very lucky to be here, spring 2021. Because there is tons of foliage here, but luckily they haven't got any leaves on so we can see all the hidden gems underneath. Right, let's keep keep searching. Yeah, that's right, there used to be a buffer stop here. Yeah, used to, uh, I believe in the early days, they used to give them cab rides. But when I came here, what they used to have is brake vans where you could get a lift up and down the track. You pulled by your favorite steamy locomotives. But wow, it's destroyed. This is disgusting. And here's that same wall from the other side, looking towards the viaduct. Wow, this is well overgrown. And here she is, Dinting Viaduct. I'll show you a better shot once uh, I get it further out. This is the start of the waterside branch. Basically, it came off the line. As you can see up ahead, you can see the canopies, yeah? That's near uh, Mottram Yard. Apparently, it came along here through this valley. If you notice in the road here, still a bit of it standing. It went round the back of these houses and up to, strangely enough, a place called Waterside Mill. There are a few other mills that served, but that's the main one it got from. Now see all this derelict stuff here, this used to be Dinting's good shed. Still a few clues, but nothing really to establish it railway wise. Let's check it out. Right, so here we have an old buffer stop. And looks like we've got some old coal drops here. Very flush with the lines they are, and there's a, a bit of a gradient going down, so I expect this is where they were dropped off. Look at all these cobbles here. It gives you an idea that this is where it transferred to road traffic from the rail. So there's a big yard here. The good shed is uh, behind me. But look at the pantographs. You can see how many lines serve this area. Right, so here we are looking back at the waterside branch. And if we move to the left, this was a location of the good shed itself. Here's some rails that led up to the good shed, still in situ. This is amazing. Wow. Look at it. <sighs> Preserved. Perfect. So coming to the neck where the uh, branch line joined up with the main line. And you can see yourself, it's getting pretty busy. Still some markings, but uh, no real track. And there she is, that's where she joined up. 
bit of railway rubble here. Remember them funny boxes? There's one. On the Manchester side. Hee <laughs> hee. Hee bargum. Nice to see they're still standing and not been destroyed. So just a word of warning, I've got permission to go around this section. Don't try it yourselves or you may be done for trespassing. So here she is, this is where it all began. This is the start of Mottram Yard. Even though it's not in Mottram, apparently it was called Mottram Yard because there was another yard that wasn't big enough. But he liked the name and so kept it. So like I say, this is the bottom end, very close to Dinting Viaduct. So let's follow it and see where it goes. Oh, there we go, there's your clue. I was going to say that was a pantograph. But I got told off on the last video for saying that, so these are the overhead electrics of the gantries for them. Gives you an idea how close we are to the line. Yep, we are very near the track now. So I'm about halfway down now. That uh, the second siding is the one that re leads onto the branch, and found these old concrete slabs, loaded them together. They've either been piled here because they've been dumped, or this was some kind of a bod box or something. Oh. The railway line is getting closer, so I suspect this is coming towards the end now of the like the small marshland yard. Gee, plenty of sleepers lying around. And bits and bobs, metal wise. And there's another. So we're now coming to the end of that first small marshland yard. Apparently it came together to make one line before going underneath a large railway bridge then it expanded out into the massive marshland yard which we'll see shortly so I'm at that bridge now and I'm going to go up to the top to get some nice aerial shots apparently this is the original stairways that was uh, set out by the railways to get down to the signal box and the yard this is very close to the station halt so as you can see they're made of old sleepers and they're certainly pretty slippy. It's nice to see a bit of history still standing. Now like the bridge that was uh, that split Mottram Marshland Yard. So just slightly ahead is that turning that went to the uh, the branch line that went to the mills and uh, dinting. So on the right hand side of the track there was a load of sidings they were mainly used by the 76s. And these were pretty active until the end. I'll film it now from the other side of the bridge where you can see where the Mottram Yard, Marshland Yard used to be. It used to be a massive place. So there it is, that's where Mottram Marshland Yard used to be. The one that was built in the 1930s. It had loads, I'd say about 20 to 30 different roads. Where then people are walking at the moment used to be a dedicated line that served the yard. Very close again where them dogs are is where there used to be a staff halt it was that busy. In fact, I can still see it. Yes, there she is. Let's see if I can get a close up. Right, so let's get down there and let's check it out. So we come to the second of the marshland yards. 
the one that was a lot bigger and a lot wider. I think it had about 25 different lines in it at one stage, controlled by two signal boxes. There used to be a staff halt around here. I'll see if I can see any remains of that. That's pretty close to the staff halt. I wonder if that was an underpass. So as we said earlier, this was um, a dedicated line that just served the marshalling yards. Now here where you can see the trees, there used to be some kind of a tower. It used to look over the yard as such. I'm not sure whether they did humping or whether it was just there for general inspections. I wasn't sure whether it was served by the electrics. I suppose this gives it away. Yes, it was. Again, just at the uh, start of that second uh, marshland yard, there are also a load of bricks here. I believe there were some shunting huts right at the hedge. Hopefully you can see the bricks. Definitely a building of some sort. Well, I'm not sure what this is. It certainly goes in style with everything else I've seen so far. I wonder if it's some kind of drainage system or something. Gee, some old remains here, dumped for the uh, railway signalling. I don't remember them having this fancy marking, mind you. That's the beauty of doing these early spring walks. You can see these things hanging out a mile. Let there be light. I expect this was one of the stanchions to light up this fantastic yard. On the left hand side of this marshland yard, it's very swampy. Looks really not maintained at all, whereas on this side it's a bit more rugged. I suspect this is where the electrics worked, and that was like steamers of 1936 onwards. Very near the end now of Mottram Yard, and I just walked out to the sides and found this baby. This looks very first generation, 1935 kind of structure. Wooden structure it is. And look, it looks like it had some kind of a platform sticking out. Is this some kind of a good bear summit from the early days? On top of that structure now, it looks like some, some kind of gate or something that led somewhere. Strange. And then the platform comes to an end. Oh yeah, I'd love to know what this is. Ooh. Showing up thick and fast these babies now. Oh yeah, look at this beast. Oh, they are everywhere. Wow, and here's another mighty beast hidden in the undergrowth. Beautiful. That gives you an idea on how far we travelled. And we are now slowly closing the neck, so I expect we're very close to the end of the, this marshalling yard. Mottram Yard Overflow. Yes, we found ourselves a signal stump. That's the ladders leading up. Looks like a wooden one. Gee, it's like a treasure hunt round here. I think this was the main feeder line. I can see uh, wires up ahead. Yes, this was definitely the feeder onto the uh, marshalling yard. Even got my own personal bridge. You can see the one behind it that serves the current line. Let's keep going. As you can see, this is how you get onto Mottram Yard from the Manchester side. And you can see hopefully where it rejoins the woodhead. And here's a nice shot looking back on myself. Like I say, the Mottram Yard is on the right hand side. Nice viaduct near Broadbottom. Right, just very close now to Broadbottom Station. And I noticed uh, when I was going underneath this bridge, there was an uh, abutment sticking out. Was this the original structure prior to them building the one behind it? Well, it does, it goes all the way along one, two, three, four, and then rejoins again and finishes. It's a dodgy structure that didn't work, and so they built this new baby. I'll part the wood, Ed. And so we heat 
rod bottom good shed as you can see it was served by the electrics she is in all her beauty Ooh, excellent well half of it was served by the electrics <coughs> nice well this has been well preserved in fact, it looks like it's a pub. Remember those weird things we saw on the wooded line? Looks like they're back again. Hidden. Is this a great central waiting room? No, I think it's more like Northern Rail, truthfully. Never mind. Original colours as well. And there she is from afar. Look at that lovely lattice bridge. Well done. Not the best station, not the oldest station, it's very urban-y. As you can see here there was another line next to this running line. I suspect this was the line that fed the goods that went into the next station down which is Godly, where there's a major junction that went off to Stockport. Yeah. Nice seeing some of these old relics still standing. So this is a nice zoom from the station. If you notice there the canopies are a lot wider than they should be. That's because it's coming up to a station which you can just about see. That was a Godly East Junction. That will be our next station. So it shows how close we are. And so we finally make our approach to Godley Junction, which is now closed. But as you can see, the roadway that's going to the left was originally a railway. That was part of the Cheshire Lines, the one which went through to Stockport and Skelton Junction. I think it went up to Wigan eventually. So it's certainly a very important junction, this. And because there's no more coal traffic coming over from Sheffield, it was closed. And the station was moved to a better location for the uh, local punters. But strangely enough, there are still a few artefacts to show what it used to look like. Let's see if we get some close-ups. Might be an old signal stump. So I'm just on that Stockport Spur, heading towards the uh, turntable. Come across this, I didn't realise they had electrics this far down. Hmm, didn't know that. Like I say, it's just a bit further along now. Hopefully we'll see one wonderful gem from the past still standing. And here you go, as promised. The godly turntable. It's certainly looking a lot more complete than it did last time I saw it. There's a bit of TLC being put in here, so I might put some of the old pictures on to give you an idea of what the uh, project originally looked like. Well, it certainly changed a lot. Wow, I thought I'd lost these pits, but no, nope, still standing. Nice. Number one pit. Number two pit. Can't have a turntable without an inspection pit, can you? Nice. And just a little further down we have this lovely signal box. Very nice. Like you say, that's the nine, that's the Cheshire line that will take you all the way eventually to Stockport. 
fact, you can even get to Liverpool. This is a uh, very, very through traffic. And so here we have Godley Station going to Stockport. Oh, Stockport direction anyway. Nice. Like I said, that station is still intact. All you need is a bus shelter and uh, ready for operations again. Even still got the original lights in place. Wow. On one of my previous videos, we came here, I think it was 90 odd, and the bus shelter was still there, as was the bridge. But that weren't in the best of conditions. All that's left of that bridge now is a couple of steps to nowhere. There was originally a goods yard at the back, but again that's been taken over by this Kerry company. Ouch! It has been destroyed. And this is how you'd originally get on this station. Boy, I don't think it's had many visitors recently. But you can certainly see how busy it was by the pantos. Sorry, not the pantographs, the overhead electric cables. I'm learning. I noticed this on the uh, Stockport side. I don't know what it is though. Answers on a postcard. Hmm. That's one of those things that we saw at Mottram. Didn't realise you had them this far down. Oh, I don't think it'll be stopping at that station. Yep, we're still at Godley East. Um, I'm wandering in the woods, a woods that was um, to the right hand side of the station. And there's supposed to be a turntable and everything here, but no clues yet. Nothing at all. I'll keep looking. So, as you can see, there is plenty of bricks here. So, there was obviously activity. Now, looking at this clearing in the woods, it's pretty circular. I wonder if this was the first turntable here at Godley before they built that bigger one on the Cheshire Line. Well, I was going to show you a massive yard here and a big uh, goods shed at the end of it, but it's gone totally. Oh dear, I got this in the 90s. You wouldn't have even known there's, a, there's no even remnants of it. Wow, talk about obliteration. And this is the replacement station. Just past the viaduct. What I call a GM uh, adapt to the people kind of thing. Wasn't built for freight, purely passengers pick up only. Newton for Hyde. Yeah, I think this was an established station at one stage. Uh, plenty of clues around uh, old buildings. Yeah, you can see the indents there where there used to be windows. Looks like it could have been an office, a factory or something. Not sure whether it was railway related though. This may have been a building. It may have been an ornate walkthrough, subway, call it what you want. But it's still got one or two features, one or two clues to give you an idea on what its original function was. And if you look at the overhead electrics, you can see that it went too far. That was the location of the goods area that used to serve this station. So all this industrial stuff was originally a goods yard. And it was served by the electrics. Wow, 
Wow, you come on the Manchester side, you get a different story. This has been well preserved and well looked after. Well done, whoever. Yes, I love that building. MSLR, the original company, eh? E by gum. This is a good area opposite, as you can see. It's certainly used looking at the traditional bricks. Next station down is Flowery Fields. Uh, it looks like it's one of those stations that was built in the 80s to accommodate for the estates and such. As you say, it's just a nice wooden kind of structure. Nothing really relevant other than to capture for history's sake. So consider you captured. Alright, just leaving the station. It looks like there may have been a bit of a siding there on the uh, right hand side. Don't know. We now come to the business end of the trip. We're now approaching Jew Snaps. As you can see there, she's widening up on the left hand side, ready to serve Jew Sap sidings. So here's a nice aerial shot looking over the Jew Sap sidings, which are on the right hand side. On the left hand side is where we have the approach to the wagon works. And here it is. Look, it's all bricked up. Right, let's get another close up. But there again that's juice snaps. Now this wasn't just a sidings, this was a major sorting sidings. It had a load of roads run by two different railway companies. And as you can see it was served by the electrics. Look at the uh, canopies in the background. This was a massive yard. If I just can't pan over here. So this was a location of the carriage and wagon works. Uh, Ducking Field Wagon Works, LNER, which BKN JCI, several companies work from this location. Right, let's get a look at Juice Snaps again. A relic from the past that's still standing. So this is filmed from the next bridge down, nearer towards Manchester. Yeah. So Juice Snap Sidings is where that factory is in the background. It's all been taken over by industrial units at the moment. As you say, this is where the holding sidings were. They, I think there was a three or four lanes here rather than just the three lanes that you can see at the moment. But over there, you can hopefully just see the start of a panther. Sorry, pantograph. That's it again. An overhead uh, canopy which uh, led onto the sidings. Yeah. Over here is where we had the carriage works. As you can see, it did accommodate a lot more than what it's doing at the moment. So there's a lot of traffic on here at the time. See them buildings at the top? That is Duckingfield, yeah? Right. And here we have a glorious view looking towards Guy Bridge. There's a triangle over there. And this is where the sidings used to be. So we're very close to Guy Bridge Station at the moment. We're on an overbridge, getting a nice uh, panoramic shot. So train is passing where the stabling point used to be. So let's get a better close up of that stabling point. Now, as you can see, this is a very, very wide area. The line to the left, they're going to Staley Bridge. And there are some sidings, some engineering sidings on the left, also called Brookside Sidings. But this is a location where the stabling point was. And it wasn't just a stabling point, it was a fueling point. Because this is where the diesels and the electrics used to stable. We had 76s, 25s, 40s, 37s, 31s, you name it, they were here. This was a very, very busy junction at the time. But look at it now, it looks a mess. 
So looking now over Guybridge Station, there was a signal box here and a bit of a goods ramp but no signs of it at all. It has been destroyed. Here we are filming from Guybridge Station itself. So the train is now passing the point where the Stalewin point used to be making its way into Guide Bridge Station. That's where the signal box is, was. See you next time.